The Missouri Tigers have had some good quarterbacks over the last decade or so, as you had players such as Chase Daniel, Wayne Gabbert, Drew Locke, James Franklin, and even Matty Mock. But ever since Locke left campus, the Tigers have struggled with consistent quarterback play. In 2020, you had both Sean Robinson and Connor Bazelak. In 2021, you had Bazelak and Brady Cook. And then this past year, you had Jack Abraham, Tyler Macon, and Cook as well. They haven't gotten the same production out of that quarterback spot that they used to, but Eli Drinkwitz has brought in enough talent to make things interesting, and hopefully the next great Tiger quarterback is on the roster and will be ready to go this fall. Currently, Mizzou has a four-man quarterback battle, and in today's video, I'm going to preview who those four quarterbacks are, talk about what each one brings to the table, and ultimately, who I think is going to win and how it is all going to play out for the Tigers. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you love college ball content, Leave a like if you want to support today's video, turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload, and let me know what topic I should do next. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So last year, Mizzou ended up going 6-7 with a loss to Wake Forest in the bowl game, and the quarterback position was criticized all year long. Brady Cook quickly won the starting job last year, but through the first half of the season, really couldn't get much going. By the end of the year, he made a lot of improvement, but would it be enough to win a lot of games in the SEC? That is what many people were skeptical of, especially when there were blue chip quarterbacks all over the roster. Tyler Macon ended up transferring down to the FCS level, and Jack Abraham graduated, so now the Tigers have four quarterbacks on this year's roster. And let's start with the first one, who's likely going to be fourth on the depth chart, and that is Jabari Johnson. Coming out of Lincoln High School in Tacoma, Washington, Johnson gained national attention in 2020 after he had a breakout year for them there, and he had the physical traits of a future elite college football quarterback. Big schools were going after Johnson for good reason. In 2021, he threw for 2,222 yards, 28 touchdowns, and just two interceptions. Those numbers were good enough. He also ran for nearly 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground. Johnson was a hot commodity and he eventually chose to go to Mizzou over Oregon, Utah, Arkansas, Washington, and Washington State. Elia Drinkwitz said, quote, Jabari was a born leader, and that's something at the position you've got to always be excited about. He's a playmaker with his feet and his arm. He's got the ability to throw, and he's an accurate passer. But he's also got that B-button quickness and that shake-and-bake ability. Those are his words, not mine. And according to 24-7 Sports, Johnson was listed as a four-star recruit, the number 21 quarterback, and the 351st best player, in the class of 2023. He's a tremendous get for Mizzou, and despite his main recruiter Bush Hamden leaving for Boise State, new offensive coordinator Kirby Moore convinced him to stay, and he will likely redshirt in 2023 and be the guy of the future. But who knows, if all three guys in front of him struggle or get hurt, Johnson's number will be called, and I think he's a guy to watch out for in 2024, 2025, and 2026. But for now, he will redshirt and get better. The guy who I think will end up finishing in third is last year's starter, Brady Cook. Coming out of Chaminade High School in Missouri, Mizzou was Cook's first Power 5 offer, and it did not take him very long to know it was home, and he chose the Tigers over Iowa, Iowa State, Wisconsin, and Indiana. He became Mizzou's first 2020 commitment. He threw for a combined 5,000 yards and 47 touchdowns, but was still only listed as a three-star recruit and the number 29 pro-style quarterback in the class of 2020. He'd end up redshirting in 2020, and last year got an and then in 2021 to make a start in their bowl game against Army, which they lost. Last year, he'd go to battle with Tyler Macon and Jack Abraham, but he won the job very quickly over the summer, and Elijah Drinkwitz was thrilled of his potential and his leadership abilities. Overall, though, it was a very mixed season for Cook. In his first five games, the only great performance he had came against Abilene Christian, as he had three touchdowns in that one, and in their loss to Florida, he struggled mightily. It wasn't until the second part of the season in which Cook got better, as he led them to wins over Vanderbilt, number 25 South Carolina, New Mexico State, and Arkansas. His best game of the year was probably against Tennessee, as he threw for three touchdowns and had over 100 yards rushing. He'd end up leading Mizzou to their bowl game against Wake Forest, where in that game, he had a touchdown in their 10-point loss. Overall, he passed for 2,700 yards with 14 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, with nearly 600 yards and 6 touchdowns on the ground. While those numbers are not bad, there were many Mizzou fans who were calling for Sam Horn or anyone else to play. But to be fair, Cook was playing hurt, and the offensive line was pretty bad, and I also didn't love Drinkwitz's play calling last year, so Cook was honestly kind of screwed. Right now, he will be healing from shoulder surgery, and I believe will be missing most of the spring, so I am very curious to see how he's going to play. And if all else fails, Cook is a solid starter, but the two guys in front of him were much highly ranked out of high school and have much more potential than him. And those are the two I'm really going to be watching this summer and fall. The first one is Jake Garcia. 
You may know that name as he is one of the craziest recruiting stories ever. As a freshman, he played at Long Beach Poly High School in California and then transferred to Narbonne. While he was there, he threw for 2,300 yards and 25 touchdowns as a junior, but then things would get crazy. He was set to play his senior season in California, but with the state of Cali putting restrictions on football, him and his family moved to Georgia so he could play. He ended up going to Valdosta High School, where he appeared in one game before the Georgia High School Association ruled him ineligible to compete. From there, he would transfer to Grayson High School, where he would finally finish his prep career. At one point, Garcia was ranked as a five-star recruit and had arguably the best arm in his class. From there, he would commit to USC and had been committed there for quite a long time, but eventually would decide to open things up with USC offering Jackson Dart and also having Miller Moss committed. Because of this, he flipped to the other side of the country and chose to go to Miami, citing Rhett Lashley as a huge reason for his commitment there. According to 24-7 Sports, he was listed as a four-star recruit, number eight quarterback, and the 48th best player in the class of 2021. While at Miami, he showed flashes of promise, including a victory in his only career start against Virginia. He completed 60% of his passes in 2022, which included five touchdowns and four interceptions. Obviously, those are not big time numbers, but Miami had a lot of problems. Tyler Van Dyke went from a top 10 pick to getting benched, and the offense was super stagnant under first year offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis, and the line was awful too. Miami was just not very good in general last year. He had played in eight total games before he decided to enter the transfer portal and pretty quickly settled on Missouri. He'll have three years to play, and this is a huge get for Mizzou. But he will have to clean some things up if he wants to start. One beat writer said, quote, the first thing that jumps off the screen with Garcia is his arm strength. His velocity on throws outside the numbers that we haven't seen from a quarterback at Mizzou since Drew Locke. Unfortunately, that velocity comes with a lack of accuracy at times. His decision making has come under some scrutiny at Miami, and his biggest mistake, like most quarterbacks, seems to come under pressure. This was magnified at Miami behind an offensive line that was deficient at picking up blitzes and stuns. So right now, Mizzou took Garcia based on potential more so than production, but with his great arm and his just overall potential, he could be this year's starter. I think he could be pretty dang good. Currently, I think he'll end up being the backup behind the guy who's been praised as the savior of Mizzou football the last two years, Sam Horn. Growing up in Georgia, Sam Horn was both a football and baseball phenom as he was one of the top MLB prospects coming out of high school and quickly blew up on recruiting in both sports. While at Collins Hill High School in Sewanee, Georgia, Horn would throw for 3,900 yards with 41 touchdowns and only 14 interceptions, showcasing an elite arm. Apparently, the Tigers beat out Tennessee for him as Horn grew up a big Vols fan and both his parents and brother went there. This was a huge get for Mizzou and Horn said, quote, Coach Drink has been with me from day one, so we have a great relationship. I like his coaching style, I like his offense, and I feel playing for him in Missouri is a great fit for me. The offense he runs is what I see as something very close to the NFL, so that is exciting for me. I love how he coaches quarterbacks, and I like how he mixes things up offensively. He committed to Mizzou over multiple big time offers, and was also going to get to play baseball for them. This is one of the biggest commitments in Mizzou history, as according to 24-7 Sports, Horn was a four-star recruit, the number eight quarterback, and the 139th best player in the class of 2022. Last year, when Brady Cook struggled, many fans were calling for Horn to start, but behind the scenes, it seemed he was not quite ready yet, and with Mizzou's offensive line being as bad as it was, there was no point in getting the poor kid killed and having his confidence completely crushed. Overall, Horn would end up playing in one game last year against Mexico State, going 0 for 2 in passing. Going into this calendar year, Horn was probably the projected starter, but in baseball, he suffered an injury, and it scared a lot of people. Some thought he would need Tommy John, but luckily it was just a sprain, and according to most of the articles I've read, he'll be rehabbing this spring and taking it a little bit slow. While I think Horn is the best quarterback on the roster and should be the starter, the injuries to both Cook and Horn lead me to believe that Jake Garcia might be our week one starter. He has more experience than Horn and has more potential than Cook, and he's healthy. While I'd be happy with either Horn or Garcia starting, I really wonder what is gonna happen to this team this year. They lost their star receiver to Georgia, but they brought in Dennis Jackson and Theo Weiss and returned some key players at the receiver spot as well. So I have no idea what to expect out of this offense. They also finally hired an offensive coordinator. They have Luther Burden and maybe the tight end game will finally get going. I don't really know and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But Mizzou has a lot of quarterback talent on the roster for seemingly the first time ever. And in my opinion, they have a couple of good options and should be much improved from the last two to three years. But what do you guys think? If you're a Mizzou fan, who wins the quarterback job and how do you think this season will go? And what school's quarterback competition should I look at next? Be sure to let me know down below. 
Leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.